This is Dave and today's big hairy idea is 4D storytelling. So as an author, I'm constantly trying to figure out how I can make my stories feel real to my readers. And the more you put details into the, into the stories, the more you put in sounds and tastes and sights, the more the reader feels that they can be present in the story itself. But still, they're just reading words on a page. You know, they have to, you have to depend on the imagination to put everything together. Now, when you look at other mediums, look at people who are live acting things, you look at TV, you look at other um, presentations, you start to see, okay, well, now I'm hearing something and at the same time I'm seeing it, it can become even more real. It's easier to form an entire picture, an entire experience. But what's really hitting me as we're entering the week of Passover is how when we do our Passover storytelling, we're retelling the story of the Exodus, we really want everybody to feel that this experience is happening to them. And especially the kids, especially we're telling the Passover story for the kids, they're the primary audience. And so a lot of times the words we tell really kind of go over their heads. And there's only so much we can do in terms of visuals. We try to act things out, sometimes we sing things, but there's only so much they can feel it. But one thing that we do at the Passover Seder that certainly for me has held incredible memories from the times when I was a young kid, or Passover was my, always my favorite holiday. And I think one of the reasons is that we, in our storytelling, we get the tastes in there as well. We're not only telling a story, we're actually eating the foods, we're telling the story through the foods. This food represents this, and this food represents this. And so as little kids, we might not follow all the words or all the details of the complex story. And the story is complex because we're, we're jumping around, we're talking about Abraham, we're talking about Levan. We don't even mention Moses. How, how can you talk about the Passover story and you think it's a story about Moses, it's an easy story for kids to follow. It's kind of like Prince of Egypt, but it's not Prince of Egypt. The Moses isn't even appearing. We're telling all these complex concepts. We're telling about these rabbis of B'nai Brock. We're all over the place in telling the story, and it's hard to follow. But when you're able to eat the foods and really feel the taste, you literally get the story in your bones. You get it in your body. And that permeates in a way that words do not. And so I think it's an incredible thing that we put so much emphasis on the way we tell this story in Passover. And that we really take it 4D. We try to take it into the very bodies of the listeners. And so these tastes are always associated with the story. And it's a way that the story is able to come alive even for the youngest of listeners. So I want to bless everybody that as you're preparing for your, for your Passover, you're able to put extra energy and love into these foods that are going to be so representative for your kids' entire lives of what this story is and what it means to them. Take care.